Boulevard to North Golden State Boulevard. Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today doing, continuing my uh, mid-year top 10s, going to run through the top 10 of each division. Today we're going to do the 130 pound super featherweight division and um, just take a look at how things are going in that one. Again, these aren't official for the year. I don't do that until we get to the um, year end top 10s. But they do change, you know, for the moment. And again, we make it official at the end of the year. Um, but here's what's going on at 130 Super Featherweight. Use the right two lanes to take the California 99 North Rail. Excuse me on the directions there, guys. <laughs> so we start with um, the guys that are dropped out of the top 10. First up was former world champion Miguel Burchell. He was number three coming in. He officially moved up to lightweight and suffered a tough loss to uh, Jeremiah Nakatila. And, um, and that one really hurt him. So he's uh, he's out of the top 10 uh, just for moving up. Just for uh, moving up in weight, uh, he drops out of the top 10. Um, but, you know, he's also not going to be in the top 10 at 135 either because of that loss. So tough one for Burchell. Also dropping out was former champ Jamel Herring. Herring also decided to move up in weight uh, for his next fight as he took on, um, I believe the guy's name was Jermaine Ortiz. And he just got outworked and outpointed at 135. And at 36, he decided to uh, call it a day. He lost that fight and he decided to retire uh, after the fight. So, solid career for uh Jamel Herring, um, you know, he, again, he was dropping out of the top 10 regardless uh, because of his um, moving up in weight, but a tough loss right there, and uh, that's all she wrote for him. And then uh, Chris Colbert is also uh, dropping out. He was previously tied for 10. Colbert, um, you know, came into the year a hot commodity, undefeated. Everybody thought he was a shoe-in to become a world champion. And he got uh, beat by Hector Luis Garcia. Got beat and and um, really outworked and outclassed in that one. And a new champion was crowned. Or, uh, and um, no, 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 he wasn't the champion. He was undefeated, but he lost that fight because he was supposed to get Roger Gutierrez. Gutierrez had to pull out of the fight with an injury, and he got uh, Hector Luis Garcia instead. And Garcia cleanly out outworked him to a uh, one-sided decision. And Colbert still has not returned. Not sure on when he's coming back as of yet. So now the top 10. We have a two-way tie for 10th. First up is Eduardo Ramirez. Ramirez um, uh, returned to action uh, at the end of May on the Davis Romero undercard and got a majority decision win over previously undefeated but little known Luis Melendrez. And now Ramirez seems to be moving up to lightweight and he's gonna be taking on Isaac Cruz next. Um, not 100% which card that's going to be on. I think it might be on the Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz uh, undercard, that pay-per-view undercard. But that's a that's a big one for Ramirez. A win over Cruz would be big for him. He definitely will be coming in the underdog um, into that fight. So we'll see what goes down. Also tied for 10th is Kenichi Ogawa, the former IBF champion. He entered the year as the champion. And on June 4th, he went to def uh, make an optional defense against... A uh, little known but undefeated Joe Cordina of the United Kingdom, and he he basically got his ass with it. The fight was over before it started. Really, second round, uh, Cordina landed a, a monster right hand that put uh, Ogawa down, and that was all she wrote. As uh, Ogawa suffers the second loss of his career, tough defeat though because he really got caught, and nobody saw that one coming. So he definitely drops uh, big. I, I dropped him four spots for number six. Um, and I doubt he comes back for the end of the year. So there's a strong chance he drops out of the top 10 by the end of the year, but we'll see. At number nine, moving up one spot from being tied for 10th is top contender Zelfa Barrett. Zelfa Barrett's currently the IBS number two contender, but most people feel that he's the, the mandatory to uh, Joe Cordina, that Cordina is likely gonna fight Barrett next and, um, and you know, go from there. So. Barrett's got a very good opportunity to win a world title in the second half of the year if he gets that shot with Cordino. We'll see what goes down. Um, but as of right now, it looks like Barrett's going to fight Joe Cordino for the title. Uh, number eight, moving up one spot from number nine, 
is former world title challenger Lamont Roach Jr. Lamont Roach really put himself, you know, back in the mix earlier this, or uh, at the end of last year when he when he uh, cleanly outclassed uh, Rene Alvarado. But now he is um, he's moving up. He's a WBO's number four contender, and um, not quite sure when he's fighting again. I thought he was going to return um, just to stay busy, but he hasn't went, he hasn't fought yet this year. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it's some, sometime soon. I wanted to say he was on the Ryan Garcia undergar, but I can't quite remember. I don't think he is, but he might be. We'll see. Um, number seven, and coming in number seven is Hector Garcia. He's a contender. He's undefeated. He previously was not ranked, but he came in and dominated uh, number one contender and undefeated Chris Colbert. Colbert was really supposed to be the next uh, champion in the division. He was lined up to fight Roger Gutierrez in February. He had to bail out of that fight due to an injury, and Colbert stayed busy and took on Hector Luis Garcia, and Garcia went in there and just cleanly dominated Chris Colbert and um, became the WBA's number one contender with that win, and now he's supposed to be fighting Roger Gutierrez on July 9th or 10th in that area. It was supposed to take place on uh, YouTube, I believe, um, but I know the fight was originally supposed to be in, um, I want to say Venezuela or somewhere, and now the fight has to move. So I think that fight should be happening. That fight should be happening very soon. Not sure if it's going to be um, this month, but it should be happening very soon. And I really don't know who to pick in that fight. I think Gutierrez got the experience, but uh, Garcia's got the youth and, the, and he's got the confidence after the win he had over Colbert, so I really think that's a 50-50 fight. Number six is the WBA champion, Roger Gutierrez. He moves up one spot from number seven. He hasn't yet fought this year. Again, he was supposed to fight Colbert in February, had to pull out with an injury, and now he's lined up to fight Hector Garcia, who defeated Colbert in his place. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that fight. Again, it's a 50-50 fight. It should take place at the beginning of July. We'll see what goes down when they lock horns. Number five is undefeated and newly crowned IBF champion, Joel Cordina. He previously wasn't ranked. He entered the year, um, uh, again, he entered the year undefeated coming in, and he got a, a gift title shot against Kenichi Ogawa and took full advantage of it, knocking Ogawa out in just the second round as he captured his first world title. Big time win for Cordina. In all likelihood, he's probably going to fight Zelfa Barrett in the second half of the year. If he doesn't, I think he's probably going to get Shavkat Rakimov instead, but I think he's probably going to fight Zelfa Barrett in his uh, initial title defense. I'm not sure which way to go on that one. I think Barrett probably has the edge, but um, Cordina's tough, and he proved that, so we'll see what goes down, but congrats to him. Number four is Shavkat Rakimov, the undefeated former world title challenger. He moves up one spot from number five. He uh, he hasn't fought yet this year, though. He's still the IBF's number one contender, so I'm not sure if he's lined up to fight Joe Cordina next or if it's going to be Zelfa Barrett. Uh, but the impression I, I got was that it's probably going to be Zelfa Barrett, but we'll see what goes down. <laughs> number three is Robson Kansaichow. He moves up five spots from number eight. Um, he, in January, he took on... Xavier Martinez, who is an undefeated can, uh, undefeated prospect on the rise and dominated him over 10 rounds, really picked him apart, scored a one-sided unanimous decision as he bounced back from that controversial loss to Oscar Valdez last year, really put himself on the map. He's a WBC and WBO number two contender, and now he has the golden opportunity, his, first, or his second crack at a world title against Shakur Stevenson, the unified champion. Big time fight right there. I'm predicting Stevenson to win this one, but Kinsaichow was an Olympian, very talented, very crafty, definitely a smart fighter. I think the I think he's a live underdog. We'll see what happens. Um, he's number three. Um, again, that fight's taking place. Um, I want to say they signed that fight for September, uh, the, the later later in September. So, and it's going to be on ESPN. Should be good. Number two is the former two-division champion, Oscar Valdez. Valdez came in number one. He drops one spot because on April 30th, he attempted to unify belts against Shakur Stevenson, and he got his ass whipped. He lost a one-sided 12-round unanimous decision, and Stevenson 
became the um, uh, Stevenson became the unified champ. Tough loss for Valdez, but you know he fought hard and, and he was in there trying and doing the best he could. It's just Stevenson was just such a good boxer, cleanly outboxed and outworked them, and um, and got a, a unanimous decision. So uh, I don't think we're going to see Valdez before the end of the year, but you never know. I mean, he might be he might just want to bounce back and shake off that loss, but we'll see what happens. And number one, no one's surprised, moving up one spot from number two is the undefeated and now the unified WBC, WBO, a super featherweight champion at 130, Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson, such an impressive performance he had in that fight against, um, against Valdez. He just cleanly outboxed them and outworked them and um, really, really didn't seem to have any trouble. Anything Valdez would land, Stevenson would just hit him back with a couple clean shots and just really ate up uh, Oscar Valdez. And um, and it was just a very, very impressive performance. So uh, Shakur Stevenson, now the unified super featherweight champion with that win. And we'll see what he does. Um, uh, actually, he's he, we already know what he's gonna do. I'm sorry, he's gonna be fighting Robson Kansai Chow in September, um, who is very good and, and probably should have got a decision over Valdez uh, last year and is very deserving. They're both top ranked guys. It's a fight that makes a lot of sense and I really can't wait to see it. So again, that's late September. I got Stevenson winning the fight by a decision, but again, Kansai Chow is good and he's crafty. So we'll see what goes down. So that's it. That's the, uh, the mid-year top 10 for the 130 pound super featherweight division. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.